QuickBooks Online 2024 Budgeted Income Statement Correction. Get ready and some coffee because we're doing some quick thinking with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our GIC, Ray Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time the report's on the left within the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab, right-clicking the profit and loss to open a link in a new tab, and doing the same with the trustee trial balance. Then we'll tab to the right so we can close up the hamburger on the balance sheet. And then we're going to change the range. 010124 tab, 022924 tab. And then we're going to see it on a month-by-month -month breakout. Run the report. Then tab to the right. We're going to close the hamburger on the income statement this time. The income statement's the meat. And we're closing the hamburger on the income statement bun the bun on the income anyway 010124 tab 022924 tab selecting the drop down months month by month run the report tabbing to the right one more time hamburger closing on the trial balance then we're going to go from 010124 tab 022924 tab let's see it side by side with the months and run it let's go back to the balance sheet or let's go to the income statement, actually, the profit and loss report. In prior presentations, we've been putting together the budget. The process for doing so was that we first take the past information that we have, in our case was the past two months, January and February, export that to Excel so that we can use the past data as some kind of starting point to then make adjustments on based on what we're going to do to improve the future. Now, I had some questions about the improvement process, but as the accountant, I was told to shut my mouth and just put the numbers in there. So I was like, okay, you know, this is, so we're gonna be making 125,970 uh, next year based on your, based on all the stuff you were saying. So that's where we're at. And then we took this and we put it back into our uh, QuickBooks file. And we did that by going to the first tab. Let's take a look at the process. We went to the COGS dropdown, and then we went into the budgeting, and we used an import feature to import the budget. So we actually then looked at a template. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com that we used to populate so that we can import the information, which is a little bit easier. Now, after that, we've noticed that the budget's a little bit off and we can see the budget here. Let's actually open a budget report going from the tab to the right, right clicking on it, duplicating that tab. And then I'm going to go into the budget. And so we'll go to the reports. There's two types of budgets. We can type in here budget and we see the primary budget uh, reports, budget overview and the budget versus actual. I think the budget versus actual is actually the more uh, significant budget because it gives something different than our Excel worksheet as time passes. But now, however, we would like to just look at the overview report to review to see what the differences are with what we have so that we can then make the adjustment to it. So the question here is just ticking and tying off our, our line items, right? So I can say, okay, if I pull out a trusty calculator just to put my numbers in place. In Excel, I can select each category. So here's my income. 
that comes out to 34606, right? So I'm just gonna type that in here. It comes out to 34606. And if I go into my profit and loss then over here, I come out to 34605, uh, 606 about with rounding. I'm off on the net income. That's the issue. I see the net income isn't tying into my net income here, 1307 versus the 1371. So I can check section by section, right? Just like that, I can check the cost of goods sold and then each of the categories, meaning the next big category is the expenses. That's probably where the issue is given the fact that expenses is the longest category. So, that, so it's gonna be the most difficult to find, right? But the other way you can kind of look if you see a difference like this is to say, well, where's my net income at 1037 minus what is over here minus the 1371.73 and say okay i'm off by about 334 and is there a 334 in here which would indicate that i put something on my side that wasn't on uh, the excel side or i can look over here and see if there's a 334 over here which would indicate there's something on the excel side as we could see here i've highlighted it that's not in quickbooks so here we can see we didn't add the interest expense and the next step if that didn't work you could take that difference and divide it by two oftentimes might give you a number that would help you to find something because it could be the case that you entered something twice so you're off by like double the amount or something like that or you flip the you flip the sign it should have been an expense but it was income or something like that Okay, so I can see that I, I, I didn't add this interest expense. So that's fine. I could just fix it now. So the, the budget is not set in stone. It's not set in stone or anything. It's in QuickBooks. So let's go to the tab to the left. And we went into our budget. So we're in the drop down in the budgeting. We see all the budgets that we've made, all one of them here. And we can hit the drop down and say, I would like to edit that budget and fix it. So let's edit it. And then I'm looking for the interest line. I'll just do it this way instead of fixing the import template and then importing it again as a different budget. We could do that if it was a extensive uh, change or difference that we needed to fix. Otherwise, I think the easiest thing is just to go in here and uh, put what we need to put in here. So it was like other income. Man, there's a lot of accounts. I got lost. Here it is. I think it's interest expense. So right there. And then this one actually goes down. So it's a little bit of a pain because I have to put in each individual number. So it's 334, then 318. So I'm going to say, all right, this is 334. And then, and then uh, that's the total. I'm not going to put it in the total yet. Let's go one by one. This is 334. And then it goes to... 318, 302. So I'm going to go, okay. Uh, 318 tab, 302 tab. And then we're at uh, 287, 272. So 287 tab, 272 tab. I'm on June. Okay. So then 259. 246 so 259 tab 246 tab we're in august so 233 222 so 233 222 and then i'm going to go to october 211 200 190 uh 2-1-1-200. 190 was it 211 200 so hopefully i got that right the total gives us a, a check so that should total out to the budget total 3074 so 3073 it's off by rounding so i think that's good all right so let's go ahead and save it i have fixed it i have fixed it so we've we've done it fixed the issue hopefully let's check it out let's go back on over and run it and then we'll check our net income on the bottom line 
So the total net income, that's probably the first easiest thing to check, 125,969. So 125,969 about, and then we could check each of the lines if we wanted to. And if this was, if this check was off, then the next thing we would check is each of the lines, is each month off. If each month was off in the net income total, it would indicate that a whole line was missing or, or messed up or something like that. If only one month is off, then of course, I can then drill down on any one particular month. So, so we can check each of these line items, you know, 23, 817, 2194, and 18, 522, 21, 16, 21, 93, da, da, da. 592194. Okay, so I think these are correct. I'm going to I'm going to assume they're correct for the practice problem purposes. Uh, but that's the idea of it. If you if you remember that these budget reports don't have a date, a double entry accounting system to make sure that they're input correctly. It's just it's just pure data input. So you have to you have to you you can use a double entry accounting system over here when you construct your budgets. Notice that we, we haven't really here. Why? Because we just did the income statement. To do a double entry accounting system, you would have to kind of basically budget your entire financial statement, right? You would have to look at the income statements impact on the balance sheet, which we'll give some assumptions to next time. We'll, we'll take a look at that to some extent. But uh, to, you know, to do the full process, you'd have to think about a cash flow budget, a purchases of capital asset budget, and so on. So that, and then we basically think of the whole journal entry process, right? Of thinking of where we where we were before, and then how we would get to where we're going to be, which would be represented by the balance sheet. The balance sheet providing you a double entry system, which would then give you some assurance that your budget, you know, makes sense from a from that point of view. But here, when we just do the data input here, like with a tax return, like a Schedule C tax return or something, we don't have the balance sheet on it. So it's, it's so it's kind of like you're just winging it. If it's if you do a data input mistake, then it's then you're going to have to just find it by double checking that we don't have the beauty of the double entry accounting system uh, to, to 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 lower the mistakes a lot. If we're on a basic tax return like a Schedule C, same here. You do that. You do the data input. You you get the information. You're just doing pure data input. It should mirror the look and form of uh, the financial statement. But like I say, we don't have each form up here creating a journal entry that has two sides to it and therefore gives us a double entry system lowering the, the likelihood of errors. Therefore, you might want to put a couple sets of eyes on this just to make sure that the, the data has been input correctly, put a couple double checks on it, uh, and then and then we'll run it going forward. So we'll take a look at uh, the report in a little bit more detail next time, and we'll take a look at the other report, which is the budget versus actual.